Hello anglers, Landon Mayer here. I'm at the Angler's Covey and I'm happy to be tying during Bug of the Month. We're focusing on damsel nymphs and we're going to display the mini leech jig damsel. This is my go-to imitation primarily for shallow waters. It also works as a tandem rig in deep water settings. But in a jig style hook with the micro pine squirrel, I love placing this below the chubby damsel, the new dry fly out with Uncle Feather Merchants. The advantage you have there is so many times you see damsel nymphs swimming in shallow waters, one, two, three feet. For anglers that are stripping damsels, it's common to snag the bottom. This is going to keep the fly elevated even if it's 6 to 12 inches below the chubby dry, allowing you to deliver to those fish that are along the bank looking for that easy meal. The other great thing about this imitation is that the tungsten bead is disguised underneath duraskin, which you'll see in the development of the fly. That allows this to match not only the profile, but keep it slim and give you weight control. We can tie this with a 2.3, 3.0, or even larger bead. So if you want it really shallow and really light on the land, we're gonna go small bead. If we wanna hit those deep water settings, we'll maximize the size of the bead. I hope you enjoy the imitation. We're gonna dive right in, and we're gonna hopefully bring you more success during the summer months. We're gonna start things out with the hook, which is my go-to, XT500, and that's from Umqua Feather Merchants. The great thing about this hook is it's super durable, one of the strongest jig hooks on the market, and you'll find that can be a challenge when you're dealing with large fish. Next to that is the radiant slotted tungsten bead. We're going to slide that onto the jig hook. What makes the start of this fly unique is that we're going to angle the hook up 45 degrees which is gonna leave this little armature slightly down from flat or plain. And the reason we're doing this is we need to tie in very first the olive nymph eyes. And I like to use extra small. And I also like to use these in light. You can find it in a dark olive, but I find light olive to be the most effective and unique. So when we're tying in the eyes, we're gonna start right at the eye of the hook. We're gonna wrap this around once, a second time then we're going to twist the eyes to the side and wrap twice again you'll notice that by doing this we have the eyes centered right above the eye of the hook and this is going to help you start designing the head of the damsel nymph we're then going to wrap twice behind the eye we're going to come in with the whip finish tool this is my fiance's charlie's favorite tool the whip finish we're going to wrap once twice secure that and cinch it down. Now normally I'm gonna whip finish twice, but for this situation, we're only gonna do this once. We're gonna take our scissors, we're gonna cut right underneath the thread, pulling it tight. It's gonna lift up and disappear underneath the eye of the hook. Now the other thing I'm a fan of using is Loctite Super Glue. And the reason for that is I like to secure and adhere a lot of my materials. Now when using Loctite Super Glue, here's the secret. I'm gonna pull this off the desk so you can see it. When you start tying flies and you buy hooks, you'll have about 5,000 magnets all over the house, and you're wondering, what can I do with this magnet? Well, if you take the magnet and you supply one drop of the Loctite Super Glue, you can then use a small piece of wire and you can dip it into the Super Glue and you get micro droplets. We can then adhere the eye and the damsel eyes on this hook. And by doing that, it's gonna secure everything. We'll let it dry for a second and that way these eyes aren't gonna twist or rotate, it's gonna stay secure on the hook and allow you more durability when you're developing this fly. Now I'm gonna grab the hook from underneath and above and I'm simply gonna rotate this to where it's flat. Now while those eyes are drying, I'm gonna bring the bead all the way up to the eyes, right behind the eye of the hook and this is gonna develop the front side and give us a little bit more depth control. Now we'll take the thread and we'll start behind the eyes and behind the bead and we're going to wrap the thread to the left. Now you notice when you start wrapping this you have a tag in that you want to elevate up. You're going to lift that up to make a ladder for all your other wraps. Stopping right above the hook point at the bend and then I'm going to break that off clean. Then I'm going to take that Loctite super glue again and I'm going to adhere this right at the bend of the hook above the hook point of the barb just to secure down that thread to make this a very durable fly now at this point you can use materials to add flash i'm a fan of using midge crystal flash and peacock 
And the reason I like Peacock in coloration is that it gives you a little sheen or shine, but it's not overkill. So what I'm gonna do is take one strand of that crystal flash or midge flash in Peacock, elevate the thread up, and I'm gonna slide this down to the hook shank. Once I slide this down, I'll wrap to the left to secure the flash down, and then wrap that thread all the way up towards the bead, stopping right behind the bead and then back wrapping twice, making sure that bead stays secure. Now at this point, you wanna use the pinch method. The pinchers on your right and left once we have that secure, we're going to pinch right on top of the crystal flash tag ends. I'm going to wrap over the top with my thumb and index finger and trade off below. And I'm going to wrap this forward all the way up towards the eye of the hook. Pausing right about three or four wraps in. Then I'll come back with the thread, one loose wrap, a second loose wrap, and one more third wrap, and then secure wrap twice. Grab the scissors and we're gonna cut that flash right above the hook shank. So the next material we're gonna apply is Micro Pine Squirrel and I'm a huge fan of this material. It's a very thin cut, eighth of an inch. You can leave it long, one to two inches in length. I like to keep mine about an inch to an inch and a half. And we're gonna match it to about the length and width of the fly. And for the sake of length, I'm gonna leave this about one times, maybe two times the length of the hook shank. Now, when I turned 18, I took a shower and all my hair fell out. So this is my excuse to work with the mohawk, which I'm always a fan of doing. And unlike the mare's mini leech, when we design the mini leech jig, what we're going to do is we're going to attach this to the hook shank with the skin facing up for multiple reasons. It slows the sinking rate down when you use this as a dropper below a dry fly. It also allows the jigging motion to lift up away from the hook shank to prevent fouling, and it gives you maximum jigging motion when you strip the fly or when it's paused. So what we're gonna do is build a little runway behind the bead. And what we're doing here is making sure we don't have too many potholes, dips, or valleys, because this is where we're going to tie in the material. Now once I do this, I'm gonna bring it back to the end of the runway. I'm gonna flip this over, I'm gonna measure the skin. I want the skin to be the same length as the runway and the hook shank. Once I cut that runway, or cut the shank to match the runway, I'm gonna do one loose wrap, and then let go. And I can adjust that, manipulate it on top to where we know that skin's facing directly up off the hook shank. I'll then loose wrap and securely wrap towards the bead Again, trying to maintain that flat runway the whole time, wrapping to the bead, wrapping back, and then pausing at this point. So at this point, you can see I've got a great length extending the material. And for those who are wondering, if you leave it long, the way to cut this on the river's edge or the still water is to bend the micro pine squirrel over the blade of the scissors or the hemostats so you don't cut it flush, and that's gonna leave you a nice exact point to the back end matching the profile of the natural food supply. Now this is tricky. This is the last movement of the hook. And what we're going to do is take it out of the hook shank or out of the vise, grab the vise, pull it open, place it nice and flat, and the last movement is to have the hook point up and the bottom of the shank up. And this is where we're going to attach the other materials. Now this is important because what we're trying to do is develop the back side of the swimming damsel nymph, we need a little bit of flash, a little bit of sheen, and we also need to match that praying mantis style head. So the way that we're gonna do this, first and foremost, is using Duraskin. Now Duraskin is awesome, because it gives you that exact look of the shank or the thorax of a natural food supply or a natural damsel nymph. It's also very supple. So what I like to do is cut this in a strip and to a fine point. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place this on the hook shank on my side, do one loose wrap and allow that to roll over to the bottom of the hook shank to where it's flush up pointing towards the hook point. I'm then going to wrap towards the bead after a few wraps back, and I'm going to bring this back again one more time. Now this is gonna be the final casing on the top. Underneath that, I wanna add a little bit of sheen and a little bit of shine. This is where we're gonna use be this tensile and large. You can use opal, you can use green, you can mix and match the colors, but the key here, just like we did before, is we're going to cut that to a point. It makes it easier for that loose wrap of thread to grab it. And again, I'm gonna leave this about an inch to an inch and a half in length. Place this on top of the hook shank, which is now bottom side up, and I'm gonna wrap 
back towards the bend, making it meet and match the dura skin, then wrap it back up to the eye or to the bead, and then wrap it back again. And you can see this is going to help us develop the back and the head. It's a really unique design in that respect. Now, just like micro pine squirrel, you may look like a cheerleader with these large ostrich plumes when you're at the vise. They're fun to play with and they're unbelievably effective in designing flies. Now, when we design the fly, the reason I chose ostrich, it represents the legs of the damsel. In addition to that, when it's wet or in subsurface conditions, it holds its form. It doesn't mash down to the hook shank, so this is going to allow your pattern to breathe and move like the natural food supply would. Now, when you're using ostrich, the challenge is understanding where the spine, and if we look close on one side, there's a spine on the ostrich, on the other side is the material V'd out. What I'm gonna do is clean that spine, and I wanna make sure that the spine is facing up. For this, I'm going to rotate it down at an angle to where the spine is facing the eye of the hook. This is vital in tying this fly. So we'll do one loose wrap, come back and check. Now, if the spine is facing the eye, when you wrap the material forward, it's gonna stand up flush and tall like a fence. If the spine's facing the bend, when you wrap it forward, it's gonna mash down. So what I'm going to do here at the thread is I'm going to wrap all the way up towards the bead and pause. Then I'll come back with the pinchers and I'm going to grab the ostrich and wrap on top and trade off below. And what I'm doing here is developing a nice tall representation of the damsel legs. We're going to continue this all the way up towards the bead, nice even wraps, nice and thick, stopping behind the bead and then when we stop behind the bead we're going to lift it up, hold it taut above the bead and the hook shank. Do one loose wrap with the thread, second loose wrap with the thread, then I'll come back and pull this back and just like wrapping on the rim of a tire, you're going to wrap the rim of the bead with the thread once and twice to secure it down. I'll then come back with the point of the scissors starting top and I'm going to work those all the way down and cut that flush. I'm going to try to leave as much open space by the eyes and tying this fly so we can represent and build the damsel head. Now at this point we're going to grab the large tensile, we're going to bring this forward. When I bring the thread up to secure this down, I want to do loose wraps and kind of walk it around the bead to grab as many materials, fibers of the ostrich, and I'm going to try to pull those back towards the bend of the hook. So I'll do this two, three, four times, and I'm going to cut that tensile and leave it a little bit longer, so that way it's going to build that flash all the way up towards the eye of the hook. Now this is the fun part. Year after year trying to design this imitation, I finally realized that the dura skin being supple, when I pull this forward, I'm trying to sandwich the bead to create the damsel head. So I, when I would pull it forward before, I kind of looked at it and thought, man, that'd be great if the hook or the eye of the hook could poke through. So what we do is I turn the vise towards me and try to measure this to where it's middle between the eyes. I'm then going to grab my left non-dominant hand and I'm going to pull tension below. Then with my dominant finger, I'm going to simply scrape on top of the hook until that eye pokes through. Now once that pokes through, I'm going to do one loose wrap on top of the dura skin, pulling all the materials to the back. And then I'm going to turn that and I'm going to grab that dura skin and bring it top below and then do one loose wrap below around the bead. And by doing this, you can see the effect as you sandwich all the bead and materials underneath the eye of the hook and on behind the eyes. So then we get that praying mantis style head. So I'm going to wrap once, wrap twice, come back with the whip finish tool. We're going to whip finish this sucker two to three times, probably do it twice here. So I'm going to go ahead and for the whip finish tool, let me show you this for all the beginning tires out there. Here's the secret. You have the tool on top of the actual handle, and then you have a ball separating both. What I'm gonna do is pinch the ball, making sure that the top hook and the divot behind does not rotate. That's the actual tool. I'm then going to hook the thread, elevate the thread above in the divot, and at the same time, slide my finger off the ball. Then by lifting up, I form a triangle, and I can manipulate that triangle up and down and where it goes on the hook shank or on the fly itself. So I'm going to place that right where my thread wraps were. I'm going to wrap once, wrap twice, elevate up below, release the divot, pull down the hook, and perform that a second time. I'm going to hook, lift in the divot, slide my fingers off the ball, allow that to freely move the triangle point, rotate around once, twice again, elevate up, release, and pull that down tight. 
Then we'll grab the scissors and just like slicing a knife through butter, I'm gonna cut that thread below till it disappears, lifts up right into the hook shank or the material. I'm gonna turn this fly to the side. I'm gonna grab the extending tag end of Duraskin, pull that taut, and I'm gonna cut that flush. And when I cut that flush and then I rotate the fly back, you can see I have the extended legs. So the aftermath and the final product, we have the micro pine squirrel tail, flash on the body. We have the praying mantis style damsel nymph head, which is almost an exact measurement to the damsel nymph. The ostrich, which represents the leg and a little bit of flash on the back. And again, tying this with an improved clench knot, it rides balanced below the water surface. If you tie it in single or as a stripping fly, you want to use a non-slip mono loop knot. And then to finally secure this, still moist Loctite super glue on the magnet. I'm going to grab one drop or a couple drops and place them on top of the fly to secure those thread wraps. And then I'll do the same on the bottom to secure the thread wraps. And the end product is the mini leech jig damsel. Olive and tan. Place this below the mothership, the new chubby damsel in blue or olive. And now you can fish this fly in literally 10 inches of water, which trout are known to chase the poorly swimming damsel nymphs all the way to the bank where they like to attack the fly. Okay, well there you have it, mini leech jig damsel. Don't hesitate to stop by the Angler's Covey. All the materials are in-house at the shop. In fact, you might run into me late hours trying to get my materials ready to tie these up for the next day. It's a great imitation. Again, take advantage of the damsel nymphs or the damsel hatch. Great attractor, wonderful food supply, not only for still waters, but also rivers alike. Look forward to seeing everybody out there in the water. Thanks again for having me on board.